Okay, Bronsted Lowry acid base pairs. So, you know, we have the definition of ba acids and bases from Arrhenius, right? So, you know, for Arrhenius, the definition is for an acid, we look for an H at the beginning. So, something like HCl, right? And likewise, for a base, we look for the OH at the end, hydroxide NaOH. Well, that definition has a problem, and that problem is the molecule HOH. Now, I know that we've told you forever, right, that water is not an acid or a base, it's this thing called a neutral substance, right? And you know what, for the most part, that's right. But sometimes when this thing dissociates, what it ends up doing is it ends up acting as a hydrogen ion donor or a hydroxide ion donor. And so because of that, what ends up happening is you can categorize it as an acid or a base according to this Bronsted-Lowry definition. So the big thing with Bronsted-Lowry uh, is that you have to get your pairs right. So on, uh, I think it's just, not, yeah, this is page three. I put the first three problems here. So this is one, two, and three. So the first thing is realizing what comes from what. By definition, a Bronsted-Lowry acid is a proton donor. Now, when you donate something, it means you give it away. Likewise, when you accept something, you become the acceptor. So the first thing you got to do is you got to say to yourself, okay, in number one, which two things, there will always be something on the reactant side and something on the product side, looks like they go together. Well, what you see here is NH3 and NH4. There's some similarity there. We have nitrogens, we have hydrogens. In order for NH3 to become NH4, it gained a hydrogen, etc. So that's the first pair that jumps out at me. And then the second pair that I see is this pair right here that I put in orange. So now what you have to do is you have to ask yourself this. In order for NH3 to become NH4, what had to happen? Well, in order for NH3 to become NH4, this thing had to accept an H. This thing, NH3 did, to become NH4. By definition, that makes it an acceptor. Thus, it is a base. It accepted to become that. When you accept something, you're the base. Now, also, let's ask ourselves the opposite. In order for this acetic acid to become the acetate ion, this hydrogen got taken away. When you give away a hydrogen, you are a donor. So this is an acid. Why? Because in order to become that, it had to give away that hydrogen. That's what I always ask myself. In order for this to become that, what did this have to do? This had to get rid of a hydrogen. Therefore, it's an acid. It donated it. For this, NH3, ammonia, to become ammonium. What did this have to do? It had to accept one, thus making it a base. The opposite is also true. For NH4 to become NH3, it had to give that hydrogen away. Therefore, it's the conjugate acid. Yes, we always have one of them named conjugate. Here, in order for C2H3O2 to become HC2, uh, H3O2, this thing had to accept a hydrogen, thus making it the conjugate base. Again, ask yourself, what did it do? All right, next one, got to do your pairs. So, the pairs are H2O and H3O. And the other pair here is HC2H3O2 and C2H3O2 minus. Well, now we gotta, you know, label them. So, for H2O to become H3O plus, in order for this to become this, what did this do? It gained or accepted a hydrogen. Thus, making it a base. In order for this to become this, again, got rid of this hydrogen. When you got rid of that hydrogen, 
makes it an acid. Likewise, in order for H3O to become H2O, I had to get rid of one of these hydrogen, thus making it a donor. So it's the conjugate acid. And likewise here, in order for this to become this, it had to gain a hydrogen right here, didn't it? So therefore, it makes it the conjugate base. And example number three, again, making the pairs. This one's different, so we'll take a look at it. NH3 paired with NH4, and H2O and OH- minus are paired as such right here. So for NH3 to become NH4+, plus, what had to occur? This thing had to accept. So therefore, by definition, this is a base. For H2O to become OH-, minus, one of these hydrogens had to go away, giving it away, making it an acid. NH4+, plus, well, in order to become NH3, NH4 had to lose one, didn't it? making it a donor. Therefore, it's the conjugate acid. Now, you know, obviously you're seeing a pattern here. There's always a base and an acid together. Likewise here, since this one's the acid, I mean, it's obvious this is the conjugate base. But the answer, or the reason for that is, for OH- minus to become H2O, this thing wants to gain a hydrogen, wants to accept this hydrogen. As such, making it a base. Now, the big thing I want you to note here, right, is that in this particular example, number three, water acts as a proton donor. Whereas here, water acts as a proton acceptor, hydrogen does. So as such, I know we've told you forever, water is neither an acid nor a base. Well, in this Bronsted-Lowry definition, it does allow for water to be one or the other. And that's Bronsted-Lowry acid-base pairs.